In today's episode of the simulator series, we are going to be creating all the GUIs for our trading system. As always, if you guys do enjoy the video or it does help you out, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox on my content. Additionally, I have a Patreon if you'd like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I made during this episode. There's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, let's get into it. Hopping directly into the studio, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create the menu for where people send trade requests to other players in our game. So we're going to go into the starter GUI, into the settings GUI, and we're actually going to duplicate the settings GUI. We can then rename this GUI from settings to trade requests. And then let's go ahead and enable this so that we can actually see it. Then going into GUI itself inside of the frame, we then have a couple of children inside of here. Let's first go into the title and we'll set the text of the title from settings to trade. And then for the subtitle, we'll also set this text to trade pets with other players exclamation mark and then what we could also do is we're going to grab this frame and then we're going to make it a little bit smaller so it looks something like that and we could even make it a little bit taller as well we just don't want it to be as wide as it was then we'll make sure that we position this in the center of our screen so 0.5 and 0.5 just like that we'll select the title frame and the normal frame which holds everything else inside of it and we'll change the background color from a gray to a blue something like that we also want to change the background color of the container as well to be like a darker blue so something like that would be pretty nice additionally we can modify the exit button if we wanted to a little bit so that it kind of looks a little bit better with the GUI. It doesn't look like it's too small. Now that we have all that done, let's go inside of the container, inside of this container, and then make this template visible so that we can actually see it. Then let's go inside of the template and we don't actually have to modify too many things surprisingly. We can keep the button and we can even keep the title, but we don't need the description. So we're going to delete that. Now, the way that they have their template actually set up is the send button is on the right and it's a little bit stretched out. So something like that. And then we're going to set the text of this from on to send and it will remain green. Then we're going to add an image label and this image label is actually going to be a picture of the player's roblox avatar so we'll just rename this to avatar then for the size we want this to be i don't know like 0.3 comma 0 comma 1 comma 0 something like that maybe we'll actually change the y from 1 to like 0.9 then for the position we'll set the anchor point y to 0.5 and the position y to 0.5 as well so that's centered on the y and then for the x we just want to move it over a little bit so like maybe 0 0.025 i think that gives it enough room to not be on the left so much and then we'll also set the background transparency to one and then we'll replace the image by scripting then for the title we need this to be quite a bit smaller so we want it to be able to fit in between the send button and the image label just like that so the position of this we want this to be 0.5 on the y so just like that and we don't have to adjust the position anymore now this won't actually be called title we'll rename this to player because that will actually be the player's name so then we'll just set the text of this for example to monster dev as that would be my roblox username and then for the template itself we want to modify the background color to actually match the background color of the outside frame so just like that and then i think the last thing that i want to do is change the font from gotham to maybe gotham black just to make that look a little bit better and then with all that being said i think that looks pretty good so we can duplicate the template a couple of times and see how it looks and it does look pretty good if we wanted to we can modify the ui grid layout a little bit i think i want to make the spacing a little bit smaller in between the players and additionally we could make the cell size on the y a little bit smaller as well like 05 even though i think that's a little bit too small but that's actually kind of similar to how they have it so i think we're going to leave it like that we're just going to delete three templates leave one and then for right now we will leave this as visible so that we can always see it and make sure that we don't forget about anything when we're scripting we'll then set the trade request to not enabled so we no longer see the gui next what we're going to do is we're going to actually create the trade gui itself so what we'll do is we'll duplicate the pet inventory gui this time and we'll rename that from pet inventory to trade then of course we'll set the enabled to true so that we can actually see it and now we have to modify the gui so first things first inside of the frame we have the title frame we don't actually need this title frame because they don't have that in their trade thing so we can actually delete the title frame but we do need this little text label right here because they actually do have like a title above it but for some reason they didn't include the title frame this time i don't know why but that's just how they have it set up so we're gonna need that text label and then let's just make sure that we position it center so 0 0.5 0 0.5 just like that and then let's set the text to trade with and then some player name here so it'll just be monster dev for right now the next thing is they don't have any exit button so we're gonna delete that the delete one will actually keep because they do have an unaccept and a decline button but for right now we'll just leave that we can also delete the warning we'll leave the subtitle for now because we kind of will use this for different things the stats we can delete those and we'll leave the info frame for right now as well what we'll then do is we'll actually resize this container right here so we want it to be uh, a little bit smaller i'd say probably like that we might want it to appear a little bit higher up so i don't know something like that would probably be good then for the subtitle what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna reposition it so that it's right above the container so i think that looks good because this text is actually 
actually just going to say your inventory. So that looks pretty good. Now you can rename subtitle if you want. It really doesn't matter. It's just kind of like a label. So I could just say your label because it's like the label of your inventory. I don't know. The naming really doesn't matter because we're not actually going to script this at all. Then we'll grab the delete button and we'll pull that to like the bottom left hand corner of the GUI. So somewhere like this because the decline is on the right and the accept is on the left. So I think that's good. And then we're just going to rename the text from multi delete to decline. And then we will duplicate this once, move it over a little bit. We'll set the position to 0 0.05. And then we also want to modify the background color to a green. So something like that. And then we also want to set the text from decline to accept. And then we're going to rename this button from delete button to accept. And then we'll also rename this button from delete to decline. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to create both of the containers for our offer and the person that we're trading with offer as well. So with this info frame that we have right here, we're actually going to rename this from info to our offer. And then inside of here, we're going to delete both the delete and the pet frame just like that. And then we're going to resize this a little bit. So for our offer, it's going to be towards the top. And then the other person's offer will be more towards the bottom. So it should take up like half of the inventory space, I'd say something like that. And we can't even stretch this over if we wanted to, it doesn't really matter. The next thing that we're going to do is inside of this frame, we're going to insert a brand new image label. And this is actually going to be to display the avatar of both us and the other player as well. So we'll rename this from image label to our avatar so that we know that we need to use this specific image label for our player. Then for the size, we'll just set this to 0 0.5 comma 0 comma 0.5 comma 0 for right now. And then we'll move this over by resizing it. And it should be above our container just like that. And I think that actually looks pretty decent. You can make it a little bit larger if you wanted to, but we're going to set the background transparency to one. So there is no background. And then there we go. Next, we'll duplicate your label and we'll actually bring that over to this container right here. So just like that, maybe make it a little bit further off. So I think that looks pretty good. And then we'll rename this from your label to our label. And then we'll set the text from your inventory to monster devs offer. And that looks pretty good. You could even make it a little bit smaller if you wanted to. It depends on however you want to do it, but that looks fine for us. Then what we need to do is inside of the container, we have another container and we have this UI grid layout. Now let's actually set this template to visible so that we can see it. And what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the UI grid layout and the template, and we're going to throw those inside of our container. Now inside of our container, we're going to have to modify the UI grid layout. So at least for the Y, we're going to set this to 0.45 for right now. So that's like half the height almost. Then what we can do is we could duplicate this template like three times. So now we have six total and we can continue to work with the spacing if we wanted to. So if we want there to be a little bit more padding in between the X and the Y, of course, we can modify that to however we like it. So like 0.05. And I think that looks pretty good. Then for the vertical alignment, we probably want it to be center. It depends on how you guys like it, but that looks pretty good to me. Now we're actually going to delete all the templates that are inside of our offer once we finish that. And we're going to only leave a template inside of our original container that we have right here. And we're going to use this template for all of the different templates that we're going to be needing to use inside of this GUI. So we're actually going to set the visibility of this to false so that we no longer see it because we don't need to. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our label and we'll rename this to our accepted. I don't like the whole naming scheme that's going on here, but hopefully you guys can keep up with it. We're going to stretch this text label to be like the same size as our container. Then for the background transparency, we're going to set this to zero. We'll set the background color to a green, something like that. And then we'll actually set the background transparency to maybe like 0.8. The reason that we're doing that is so that they can actually still see the pets that we have offered to them. And then we're going to modify the text to say accepted in all caps, just like that. The last thing they'll do is we'll duplicate the UI corner from our offer and throw that directly into our accepted, just like that. And now it looks Looks perfect. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our offer. And then what we're actually going to do is position it a little bit further down. So we'll set the position to 0.6 and we'll rename this from our offer to their T H I E R offer. So their offer, then we'll select our avatar and our label, and we'll duplicate both of those as well. And then for the position, we want to bring these down to here as well, just above this. And now that looks good. Just like that. Then we'll rename the avatar from our avatar to their avatar and our label to their label. And then finally, we need to duplicate our accepted, rename this to their accepted, and then copy the position from their offer to their accepted. So just like that, but we have to modify the anchor point a little bit. And there we go. Now it's all perfect. So what we'll do for now is we'll set their accepted and our accepted to not visible so that we don't see that. And then the rest we'll handle with scripting. So one thing that I remembered is that when people send us a trade request, we're going to have a little GUI pop up that tells us that somebody sent us a trade request. So what we're actually going to do is the trade request that we have right here, which is actually sort of
sort of like this little menu, we're actually going to rename this GUI from trade request to trade menu. So now that we have that, what we'll then do is we'll then create a trade request GUI, which is going to hold the request that we're actually getting from other players. So what we'll do is we'll literally just duplicate this trade menu and rename it from trade menu to trade request. Then we'll set the enable to false for the trade menu. And now we just have the trade request GUI enabled. The next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to delete all the scripts because we won't be scripting this GUI itself. We'll probably be using trade menu or another GUI like that. Then let's go inside of the frame and we're going to delete the container. We'll delete the title, but we'll leave the exit button and the subtitle and the UI corner as well. Then what we're going to do is we're going to make this a lot smaller. So actually probably something like that's pretty good. And we're just going to move it over to somewhere like right here. We could make it even smaller if we wanted to. It really depends on however you guys are feeling, but I think that looks pretty good. Then for the subtitle, we'll just rename this from subtitle to message because basically what it's going to say is player's name. So monster dev has sent you a trade request exclamation mark. And that's going to be towards the middle of the GUI. So I don't know, somewhere like right up here, I think it looks pretty good. Then we have the exit button right here. We might want to enlarge it a little bit, something like that. We'll also duplicate it real quick. And then we're going to set the position of it. We do want this to be in the center of the screen. So we're going to say 0.5 on the X anchor and 0.5 on the X position. And then for the actual Y position itself, we want it to be towards the end of the GUI. So like point five, maybe 0.75. I think that actually looks perfect. So then what we'll do is we will stretch it out a little bit so that this will be the accept button and we'll make it even a little bit larger as well. So there we go. Let's recenter it real quick. And that looks good. Then for the background color, this is going to be a green. So just like that, the text will say accept. And then that looks all good. Let's rename the new button from exit button to accept. And then we also need to add an image label inside of this as well. And that's going to hold the player's avatar. So let's set the size to just 0.5 comma 0 comma 0.5 so that we have it scaled and then we just want it to appear in the middle so something like that looks probably pretty good but let's go ahead and position it so 0.5 and 0.5 just like that and let's also set the background transparency to one of this image label and we'll rename this to avatar and there we go that looks pretty good so now we have all of our trade GUIs but the last thing that I actually forgot to do is inside of the trade GUI itself we actually have to modify the background color so we're going to select the frame we'll change the background color from this orange to this blue right here. And then we can select all of our containers just like that. And we'll change their background color from that dark orange to that dark blue, exactly like that. And now all the GUIs look perfect. So then what we're gonna do is we will select all the trade GUIs once again and set them to not enabled so that they will be invisible. With all that being said, that's gonna be the end of this episode. In the next episode, we'll begin scripting all the trade GUIs so that we can have a fully flushed out trading system. But until then, if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox fun and content. Of course, I have a Patreon if you just like to support me and get access to all the scripts and the game file that I made during this episode. There's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode.